Well, Sooner fans, the time has finally arrived for Oklahoma's official first SEC contest as a member of the SEC. The Sooners will be hosting the Tennessee Volunteers in Norman, Oklahoma this Saturday. It'll be Saturday Night Football. Um, I, I think this will be a very truth-telling game. These are two teams that we're going to learn a lot about as a result of this contest. I think that we all have our preconceived notions about Oklahoma and Tennessee going into this game, but the matchup will either validate those assumptions that we made about the respective teams or inspire us to reevaluate who we think those respective teams are. A lot of people are now under the impression that Oklahoma's regressing a little this year, that they're not exactly what we expected them to be. They're a little underwhelming, whereas Tennessee is exceeding expectations. And people are a little shocked by how good they actually are, kind of like the New Orleans Saints. It's, it's, it's a shock, and people are adjusting to it. But let's, let, let's talk about Oklahoma for a few minutes as they prepare for their first SEC contest as a member of the conference. So, yes... Oklahoma, in comparison to what a lot of people expected out of them, they're a little bit underwhelming this year, but there's a reason for that. Oklahoma is very banged up. They've caught the injury bug. They've had a lot of bad injury breaks that we did not expect going into this year. Their offensive line is beat up. And offensively, if your line is deteriorated, if it's damaged... That's automatically a liability. That's going to throw the entire balance of your attack out of whack. And so that's problem number one for the Sooners. Number two, another big component that I talk about in the time leading up to the season with Oklahoma was their receiving core and how dynamic it can be. Well, I look at the injury report, and Jaleel Farouk is on there. He's out for at least six weeks. Jaden Gibson is on there. He's going to miss the entire season this year. Nick Anderson, he may be ready for this Saturday. He's battling an undisclosed injury right now, but it's it's going to be a game-time decision. Hopefully he'll be on the field because Oklahoma is going to need everything that they can possibly muster up on the offensive side of the ball to compete with Tennessee on Saturday. I had high expectations for Oklahoma because of their defense. Their defense is still in shape, and their defense is looking every bit just as dominant as I expected them to be. Tulane scored a little bit on them. They also had some defensive points in that matchup, too. Um, but they were dominant against Houston, against Temple, as much of a gauge as that can possibly be. But they they hit hard. They're fast. They're ferocious. They're well-coached. Everything that I would expect a Brett Venables defense to look like, they are. But offensively, the damage that's been done to their offensive line how it's going to affect Jackson Arnold and, and, and the pressure rate that he faces in that game and, and, and how we can deal with that. That's, that's going to be a huge determinant in the outcome of this game. Jackson Darnold, or excuse me, thinking of the Vikings, Darnold. Let's get back to the college football sphere now. Jackson Arnold. There we go now. We got this, Brian. He's looked good this year. He's, he's looked good. He's looked polished. There's there's definitely, he's a work in progress. I expect him to grow more and more each and every single week. But from what I've seen the first three weeks, I I like what I've seen. But, uh, but there's, there's definitely a ceiling that he has yet to reach. But I think week in, week out, he'll get closer and closer to that. But what's a downfall when it comes to a young quarterback's growth is when you're facing pressure all the time, when your line is badly injured, and when your receiving core is injured. It's not a great break for Jackson Arnold's. Um, but I hope that this is a game that can help his confidence out. But Oklahoma is going to need a couple things to go their way to stay in this contest just because of how dynamic Tennessee is on offense and because of how much Oklahoma is missing on the offensive side of the ball. Let's talk about Tennessee. Man, they look electric on the offensive side of the ball. Some absolutely just psychotic stats here I want to mention to you. 8.3 yards per rush so far for the Vols this year. 63.7 points per game. And granted, it's a little inflated. I, I, I had the same issue with Oregon last year to start the year just because of who they played to start the season. Tennessee has uh, has, has played two group of five teams in NC State. So they, they, they've been able to, 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 to pad that a little bit. 
But nonetheless, I'm not going to take anything away. I'm not going to deduct anything away from Tennessee because that off that offensive performance has been nothing short of spectacular for the Vols. Nico Iamaliava has been nothing short of spectacular this year. And those five-star quarterbacks, they can be hit or miss. There's some that get inserted into big game situations, and they look frazzled. They look confused. They look not prepared for the big moment. And there's some that are inserted into big games, and they're just that guy. They've got the it factor. They've got the physical prowess and the mental competency to live up to the lofty expectations that were attached to their name. That is Nico Iamaliava. He has been fantastic this year. You saw him playing a ranked opponent in a neutral site against North Carolina State in Week 2. Was just, just absolutely dominant. Handled that situation like a pro playing a, uh, playing a ranked team on Week 2. So caps off to him for being composed in that game. Tennessee's offense looks remarkably dynamic. But I want to take a moment to acknowledge their defense, too, because it's been equally as dominant. And, again, you got to put into context who they played so far. But 4.3 points per contest on defense. I don't care who you're playing in the FBS. That's impressive. And that shows that you have a defense that's capable of doing amazing things. Can they do it in Norman on Saturday? Can they match the defensive powerhouse that they're going up against. I like Tennessee in this one. I like Tennessee to win this game. They're favored to win minus seven. Um, I think they'll win. I'm going to go by the score of 34-24. I think they're just going to simply outscore Oklahoma. I think this will be a close game for a while because both teams flex great defenses. But Tennessee's high-powered offense, I think it's just going to overcome Oklahoma in this game. It's tough to win in Norman. It'll be very tough for the Vols to do so, especially you know Norman is going to be hype for their first game as a member of the SEC against an SEC opponent. But I think Tennessee will go in there. I think they'll get the job done, and I think that they'll continue to impress us, like myself, who I didn't have them in a college football playoff bracket, and I had Oklahoma. Unfortunate injury breaks have happened for Oklahoma, but Tennessee, nonetheless, Tennessee is exceeding expectations. Can they continue to do so on Saturday? We will see. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you and the time that you took out of your day to watch the video. And if you enjoyed it, please be sure to like the video and share it as well as subscribe to The Era. The more likes and subscribers I get on this channel, the more resources I can attain and the more resources I can attain, the more value I can provide to you, the viewer. And that is how I show my appreciation for you for the time that you devote to watching my videos. So thank you so much and have a great day.